So I got interested in family therapy in the late 70s. Um, Actually, even saying that makes me realize how long I've been around. Um, but it was it was fairly new at that point, mid late '70s, and um, I began to want to really get a little more exposure uh, to what was going on, and uh, fell in love with uh, uh, Virginia uh, based on um, the book that she had originally written in 1972 called People Make It. And I don't know if you ever get a chance to take a look at that. It, it will read in a dated kind of way, um, but some of the concepts in there, particularly as it relates to her notion of self-esteem and uh, communication stances, I think still have a lot of merit, uh, things that you would, would want to know. So I go to this uh, training and um, the context is uh, the video clip is probably about four or five days in. And I'm going to be honest with you, I was not prepared to be wowed by anybody. Um, I don't know if uh, Dr. Matta has shared any of our history with you, but I grew up over here in North Braddock and Braddock, uh, kind of a rough neighborhood back then in the 60s. Um, and being kind of a street person um, with street smarts, if you want to call it that, um, I'm not easily impressed. Uh, I think, you know, a lot of people are fooling themselves. And, and uh, so I was not expecting to go to a training and have this woman that was in her 70s, who I could not keep up with, um, absolutely blow me away. And uh, you're going to see in this little clip um, uh, a, probably a lot more than you want to know about me personally. But at the same time, um, I want you to pay attention to Virginia and the way that she kind of crafts her style of, of um, counseling. I want you to be thinking about joining, because that'll be the over, kind of the overarching, overriding theme here. How does she join with me? And you have to be thinking about joining. When you're thinking about your clients, you want to be thinking about their age and development. The way that you go about joining with a teenager is going to be very different than a uh, elementary school child. Very different than a um, let's say a college age uh, person. Very different again than a middle age or um, uh, older, we'll just, I'll use that convenient term, older person. What about gender as it relates to how you would join? Um, what about what you know to be the person's value perspective? If they come from a faith perspective or they come from um, some sort of agnostic or atheist tradition, even though you may not know that going in, but sometimes you do. Uh, it's interesting how people will present that. How would that affect the way that you would approach uh, joining someone? Um, I want you to be thinking about eye contact. I want you to think about proximity of space. How close, in, in terms of trying to join with someone, um, might you make use of your, your, the person, your body, the physical space? What about touch in terms of joining? Um, you know, we're kind of a, uh, in, uh, Americans in our culture, we're kind of interesting that way. We're, I think, so concerned about um, violating boundaries that we've kind of thrown um, touch out with the, the baby out with the bath water. The touch is very powerful. What about tone of voice? Um, soft tone, um, kind of a firm tone, a loud tone. Uh, hopefully not uh, necessarily judgmental or condemning, but their tone, tone of voice is a joining, uh, a part of joining. What do you do about joining with one person as opposed to a group 
right? So you have a person come in and actually it's a very different process of joining than when you have a couple present to you, than when you have a family present to you, than when you have a sibling subsystem come in. I, I had one family come in and brought three, um, it was a um, blended family. Um, two daughters were biological sibs and one was the biological sib of the other parent. And of course there were three teenage girls and they were killing each other in this new uh, household. How do you manage joining when you've got adversaries, people that present uh, as adversaries, and then you've got all, you know, the developmental perspective. So uh, another book you want to write down. This book was originally published in 1962. It is as relevant today as it was the moment it was penned, called Persuasion and Healing by Jerome Frank. It was updated in 1993, so you may have luck um, on half.com or some of these other websites picking it up for a buck or two. There's still a lot of copies around. In 93, he updated it. Um, uh, his daughter, I think, became a, either a psychologist or a, um, I think she became a psychologist, and so he co-authored it and updated it in uh, 93. But joining, he doesn't, maybe use that word uh, quite the way we, we do today, but the curative properties of that original uh, contact that you make with the client. Original not in a sense of it being um, a one and only, but the joining is an ongoing process. Right? With each and every contact that you have, there is a deepening, hopefully, of the the therapeutic alliance or the therapeutic bond. What we know is that that's the most significant curative um, dimension in terms of treatment and counseling. What kind of relationship do you have with the client or the couple or the family? Um, so, all right, so let's pause there. And if, if I, I, you know, sometimes we put this on or I show it different places and, and I'm fine. Other times I get a little embarrassed. I don't know, it's this kind of dis self-disclosure. That's a whole other thing. We just had this ethics workshop on, you know, when do you disclose and it be appropriate. Um, for training purposes, I, I, I don't see any harm in this. But um, if for some reason I get flush and turn red and it takes me a minute to recover afterwards, just bear with me. Other things, but there's a part of me that's afraid of you and your knowledge. Okay, that's how knowledgeable you are. Wait, let me do something. Yeah, where's our little right here? Yeah, we'll get that one. Then I'm going to take the lyrics. Could you sit down there? Sit, really sit down. Now at this moment in time, who else am I, Tom? For, for me, for you, who else am I? My dad. Okay. Now, I think that there was another piece to this. You wanted him to be up there. says that I know that that isn't the case, that I, I do feel safe and secure on some levels. Um, <coughs> just, there is a part of me that is, has been awestruck with some of the things that I've been learning. And, um, um, what are you feeling right now? feeling better, uh, more confident, and uh, not, as, uh, not as frightened by your knowledge. Um, but you're right. I didn't want you to be up there. He fell down so often. Now, let me ask you something. Have you fallen down in 
bring your own information to the Okay. Is there something at this moment that you remember particularly where you felt you fell down? As an adult or a child? Whatever comes to you. I remember having a dog um, that I did not take very good care of that died. What about you and your children this moment? Do you feel in any way you're falling down with them? Um, um, when I get angry, <coughs> I become very angry and I know it's frightening to my kids in that sense. I don't um, abuse them, but I know that that rage, there is a rage that is triggered from time to time, and it, I find it frightening. Okay, now, your children being four and two? Five and two. <coughs> Five and two, they must come up to hear on you. Right. Uh, let me see, I want to take, a boy and a girl, or? A boy and a girl. Which is the youngest? Uh, Tommy is the youngest. He's All the right, Tommy, would you come here, please? And you want to be about this size. Right here. So you, you get to your daddy right about this size. That's right. You're right about that size. Now the little girl? Uh, Natalie. Natalie? Um, who shall we have for Natalie? Yes. No, not real Natalie. That comes to a flick because I don't <coughs> like to do that to people. You, oh, you want me to pick? Yeah, why don't you do that? I picked one, you pick the other. Susan? All right, now. All right, now I think you're a little bit taller. If you're fine, you probably come right. up here. Okay. Down, down to about here. That's about right. Okay, now you take a hold of your daddy on his belt. You take him on his teeth. Okay. Is your wife shorter than you are? Yes, she's about 5'7". Okay, well, at least she's... About 5'7". About 5'7". Okay, all right. Now, these two little kids can remind you where you were. And what I'm sensitive to you at this moment in time is that you were aware about how you could demolish these children. And that your father often behaved in a demolishing way. And that when that happened, it was both frightening, but you learned something from that. How did you learn to, to um, affect or to cope with your father's uh, demolishing uh, actions when you were a little boy? Um, <coughs> did what he said, or I'd get the hell out of the house okay. and stay away. Right. Now, what I want you to know is that you have successfully kept your life from your father's demolishing things. However, while it was successful in keeping you here, there's still a lot of pain connected with that. Now, being angry is a human emotion. For you, it's tied up with being out of control. And maybe sometimes you worry about that. And what I'd like you to do now is to see yourself when you feel angry, let's say toward this little one, is that you find some place where you can, first of all, you allow yourself to breathe so that your hands feel all right. Then you find a place where you can put him at eye level. He can stand on his own feet. Look at him. Put your arms out to him and tell him. By that time, you won't be angry anymore. But then you will tell him what made you angry. Now, it may even come after you've had a cross word with him, or that you have been out of, uh, maybe you <coughs> little rational or whatever, so that you have a chance to help him to know that um, you, you can make contact with him. Now, when he gets angry, then you will, you will teach him how he can do the same. This anger that you have, and that, that the kids have, and everybody has from time to time, contains the wish to, to let, let the self have more security in 